Okay, so should I start? Yes. I should, okay. Well, my name is Christy Galoff and I'm uh, really happy and honored to be here. And it's the first webinar, so it's also still a bit exciting. And I welcome you all the uh, semi-finalists of the HIVO Social Innovation Award. Um, really great that you're all here. I see 13 people there and I'm going to try and do my best to answer your questions. Uh, but first I'll tell you a little bit about social innovation since this is the HIVO Social Innovation Award. Uh, and social innovation also from a European perspective, well, I am the director of Kennisland, which is based in Amsterdam. Um, so, uh, truthfully, it's the only perspective I can really give is the European one. And just a couple of words on Kennisland. Kennisland is a, a think or a do tank um, geared towards social innovation or renewal within society. And we've been around for 15 years. And we try lots of interventions to try to make society smarter. And, um, and we're really honored to host the Social Innovation Learning Community the next coming weeks. You'll see Thijs and Nora and Wieteke and, uh, and share with you uh, the experiences we have, but also mainly ensure that you together can share and learn from each other. Um, Social innovation, it's a, a, quite a difficult term. Uh, I think there are lots of definitions around. One of the most common definition is um, new ideas, and it could be products, services, or models that simultaneously meet social needs um, and also create new relationships and collaborations. And um, there are many definitions around, but you could say it's a new way to tackle social problems and societal challenges. And what is interesting is that, of course, social innovation is not new at all. It's been around for ages. I mean, lots of people, and you're all very experienced, and will have a lot of examples of social innovations around you. The thing that is new is that it suddenly it is a little bit of a hype. So politicians talk about it, there is European money on social innovation. And um, the question of course, why is that? Why is suddenly social innovation, does it have this interest? And I think one explanation is that more and more people do find that a lot of the societal problems that are there, think about unemployment or elderly or youth care, are problems that are not really solved anymore by just economic growth, or by the government, or by the, uh, the big industries, and that they will be responsible for solving all of these societal challenges. And that the reason is that a lot of these challenges are complicated. They're what we sometimes call wicked problems. They are complex. They are, it's not so easy to pinpoint what is exactly the root cause and how could you actually solve that. And another feeling, of course, is that um, it's not so much that you need to solve these problems for people, but that you need the people themselves to kind of come up with the solutions or that you need to tap into the knowledge and the potential that people have themselves and that that is the only way to get to new, more sustainable uh, uh, solutions. Um, so this is actually the reason also why the European Commission, for example, has said we need to really invest also in social innovation and not only into the classical innovation, which have more to do with creating economic growth by new products, new technologies, and that that would solve it all. And um, um, so that's interesting because now I think there is more an acknowledgement that Innovation is something that is also social, that has to do with relations, with new interactions, and that there are a whole lot of new players that are actually part of the whole social innovation, that it's also the people themselves, or social entrepreneurs, or little businesses, or citizens themselves, and actually can have a stake in where they want this, the world to go to. And um, perhaps a couple of characteristics still is... Um, what I said before, a lot of different actors are in the field of social innovation. So we, not only the, the main actors that normally are classically defined for taking care of issues in society. Another thing that is interesting is that it's also about different values. So that social innovation is not only about 
doing things better, but really perhaps envisioning a different society where values can differ than that we had before. So there's also something ideological about it, like wh what's the world that you would like to live in? And another uh, characteristic of social innovation, and when I look at your projects, I can also see that is that it's very locally embedded, and that it's not only about scale and conquering the world, but that it also could really be about small changes, big ambitions, small steps. Something to keep in mind, of course, is that social innovation is not an end in itself. It's something that we're trying, and everyone is trying, you could say, and there's a, a whole movement going on, but it's in order to create a more social, sustainable society. And uh, I think that's one thing to really remember, that it's a means and not the end in itself. Um, perhaps just to, um, don't want to make it long and open it up for some questioning and discussion, if it's possible on a webinar, uh, perhaps a couple end with a couple of tips for you. And uh, the first tip also when I was looking at your projects or interventions or your businesses or organizations that you are working on, I think it's, uh, and this is also something from own experience at Kennisland, is that it's uh, very important not to see things as a project. I think there are lots of projects uh, going on and what we don't want is only more projects. And um, um, so what really matters is have you thought about what you're actually trying to achieve? What's your theory of change, for example? Why are you doing the things that you're doing? What is actually the underlying problem that you really wanted to solve? And can you, are you keeping track of that? Uh, so also this for the coming two weeks could be an important question to ask yourself. Like, why am I doing the things that I do? Not just because I thought of that, you know, when I wrote the proposal or when I started with this two years ago, but can you keep researching and reflecting on why you're doing the things? And I think, you know, this will perhaps mean that these two weeks could function a little bit as slowing down, taking the time to reflect, but that, that could lead to speeding up uh, in the long run. Uh, and another thing I think important also for your project or not to make it too much of a project is that you really go out and to really question is that what people really want? Are they waiting for it? Is this something they need? Could it have a value in their life? Or is it just, you know, a lot of times we all kind of get caught in our own hobby horses because we like to do it. Another, uh, uh, the second tip I would like to give you is to really also uh, for the coming weeks Acknowledge that social innovation is not a, a theory-based field. It's not, there's no recipe in how to do it. You know, you'll find also in the library, you'll find articles and people will have ideas about it. But at the end of the day, you're the practitioner, you're the expert and you'll have to do it really yourself. And uh, um, um, yeah, it's not a, it's, it, I think that is interesting from social innovation is that it's a practice-based field and not a theory-based um, and uh, um, that also means that you really keep learning yourself. I think a learning attitude in a lot of the work that we do is really important. So, you know, keep learning, be a, as Donald Schoen said, a reflective practitioner and stay curious and question every time when you get a, a how-to recipe, even these. Um, the third tip I would like to give you for the coming weeks is, um, I saw there were quite a lot of questions about scaling. Uh, and I must say, um, perhaps I'm a bit uh, skeptical about scaling in the social innovation field and that perhaps a better approach could also be about how to make things more, how can you spread things, how can you make it almost more contagious. And, uh, and this does mean that it, it starts by being very open and communicating about what you're doing. And not only the end results, but also the process and the lessons. Can you be open about that? Can you communicate? Can you write about that? Can you involve others uh, as much as you can? One of the slogans we have at Kennisland is dare to share. And uh, well, I, I would really invite you to dare to share because I think it will make your, your, yeah, your interventions a lot stronger and communicable. 
And um, uh, the fourth one, my fourth advice to you is, uh, um, I think the social innovator itself, not only your concept, but you as being the social innovator, uh, it's uh, it's demands from you to be bold and courageous and agile and pragmatic and really to try and find solutions that work for you. And you're the pioneers. You're the you're the the forefront. So uh, I wish you also a lot of courage. And the last, of course, is to take all the four above tips or advices with a grain of salt uh, and to think of your own advices and perhaps share those with each other and never to stop questioning others and yourself. Um, and perhaps I'll leave it to that as a first introduction. Thais? <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, I see a couple of uh, questions. I see a couple of virtual hands up. Um, I think Serena was one one of the earlier ones. So let me just unmute you so you can ask the question. Serena, are you there? Yes. Hi. I'm here. Did you have a question for Chris? No, I. I don't have a question. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Anybody else? So you can use the, um, the hand uh, symbol to um, raise your hand, basically, and to ask a question. Shamila. Yes. Did you, have a, did you have a question for Chris? Hi, thank you. Thank you, Chris and Pierre. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. I can. <laughs> Hello. Hi, uh, my uh, question is the, the communities or the people who are going to be the beneficiaries are not willing to 